Hey, Lighthouse, uh, it's Friday. Let's have a question and conversation. And today we have just such a profound question. And so let's dig right in. The question is, I hear Christians and non-Christians say, everything happens for a reason. Oh, can't you picture somebody doing that? Well, you know, this is terrible, but everything happens for a reason. Christians talk about how God is in control and he has our whole life planned out. I'd like to hear you discuss these beliefs versus man's free will. Man, that is a long conversation, and we only have the the ability to just scratch the surface of it today. But let's start. Might as well scratch the surface. You know, I think a lot of this thinking comes from the story in Genesis of Joseph and his brothers, where Joseph is sold into slavery, and uh, his brothers are clearly evil. They do the wrong thing. They participate in, in bad, evil things. And Joseph's life takes turn after turn after turn that results him with him being second in command in Egypt. And, and then because of his position, when his brothers come groveling um, from uh, Palestine, the nation of Israel is saved from famine because Joseph recognizes his brothers as his brothers. And at the end of the story, uh, Joseph's brothers are groveling and saying, oh, we're so sorry. Could you please forgive us? And Joseph says, hey, look, you intended this for evil, but God intended it for good. Now, look, that's scripture, man. What a beautiful scripture that that people can intend something for evil and yet God can intend it for good. That is an amazing truth. The question is this. Is that a story of what happened in that time? Or maybe even we could expand it and say, this is a story of a way that God works without saying this is always how God works. Everything happens for a reason. Well, is God always that reason? And as we look at the world today, are we seeing God's will played out? Or are we seeing evidence that God has is absolutely powerful and absolutely omnipotent? And yet people are making choices too. Well, you can tell that we're going to have to approach this with a great deal of humility. This is not something that we're going to have to say dogmatically, this is it. And anybody who thinks differently is wrong. But rather with humility, we're going to have to approach this and say, how does God work? We're going to have to not start with, well, I just think that, or, well, somebody taught me, but rather we're going to have to start with the scriptures and we're going to have to say, Our presuppositions are going to submit to the scriptures. When we get data from scripture that is different than what we believed or thought coming in, we're going to submit to the scriptures. And if we're confused, we're going to be confused. And we're not going to say that our not understanding the absolute perfect will of God is is an affront to trusting in personally the God of the Bible. So that's my initial thought is let's approach this with humility, with good conversation, with friendship and some that say, yes, we are seeing God's will played out. And this is the only way the universe could have gone. Let's be friendly to them. And others who are saying God doesn't even know the future. That would be an open uh, theologist, (laughs) theologist. Uh, That (laughs) that would be an open theologian who would say, yeah, um, God sees all the possibilities, but doesn't doesn't know which way it's going to take. Well, look, let's take both of these guys or, or people and say, man, let's be friends and pursue this together. All of us submitted to the God of the universe whose ways are higher than ours. So first I would say, what do we mean by everything happens for a reason? If what you mean is that everything has a cause, I guess you're right. But sometimes that cause is obviously my decision-making. Sometimes the cause is, is um, barometric pressure. You know, we go, why are there hurricanes? And you would say, well, because that's the, the, the way the weather went that year, you know, there were reasons for it, but we have to say, is there a spiritual reason for that too? Is God the one creating that? You know, as, um, as we look at the COVID-19 thing, we go, man, everything happens for a reason. So God intended for this. Let me give you better language right here at the start at the start. And we'll just go for 12 or 15 minutes today, and we might make this a two-parter, or I'll see if I can get through the whole thing. But let me give you better language right now. Instead of saying everything happens for a reason, why don't we start saying this? God can redeem anything. Because that is measurably true. 
that whatever the cause of something is, God in his son has redeemed everything that we will get to the end of time and there will be wiping away of tears. The wrongs will be made right. And we're going to see evidence of that in our lives. We're going to get through a season and go, man, uh, I wouldn't say that God was the cause of that. This was evil people doing evil things, but I can see how he is so powerful that God could redeem, make something beautiful, buy back that pain and that evil and turn it into something that we might even say is beautiful. Might even say there's some light shining through those cracks. So everything has a cause. I'm with you. That cause is always God. I'm less sure. Um, what about this? Everything happens for a reason. By that, do you mean that everything is predetermined? That everything is laid out? There was no mystery in how this was all going to play out? Well, I have several answers to that. Answer number one is, is simply this, and I'll be brief, but to distinguish between, between God's foreknowledge and God's uh, perfect will is beyond me, and it's beyond you too. Um, while there are those that would claim they know this for sure, look, um, the God's ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts, and we're going to have to approach this with humility and say, look, um, I am not going to know this side of eternity why everything happened like it happened. I am going to have to simply trust that God can redeem all of this stuff. So the reason I trust God is not because my life is laid out every step um, in a way that can't be changed. I trust God because I trust him personally, because I know that whatever happens, my will playing out, other people's will playing out. I know that God is powerful and will be with me. Um, not that he will make every choice for every human, but that he will be there and that he is the powerful king of the universe, able to redeem anything. So answer number two to is everything predetermined would be something like this. Well, the volitional will of God is evident in scripture. The sovereignty of God is unassailable. We can't, there's nothing to be said against the sovereignty of God by a serious student of the scriptures. Um, if God says something is going to happen, it will happen. Uh, and I would say this is most evidenced by God's covenant keeping and, and by Christ himself, that from Genesis 3, a Savior is promised, that a Savior is promised throughout the Old Testament, and that at just the right time, in exactly the right way, to exactly the right people, Jesus appears. God keeps his promise, and it's not just evidenced in Christ, but it is most evidenced in Christ. And we would say that, look, in the same way that that um, a king is has ultimate authority in his kingdom, God has ultimate authority in the universe. But saying that God's will is effective and saying that God has predetermined all of history are two very different things. And we need to we need to think deeply about that. Let's think about it like this. It would be pretty easy for you and I to imagine a God who was so powerful that he could overwhelm my will with ease. He could make me do what he wants me to do. He could change the way I think, feel, and act. We could imagine a God who is that powerful and yet chooses not to overwhelm my will. In the same way, again, that a king might rule over his subjects. Now, the king, if he wants to throw people in jail or conscript them into the army or make them the mayor or whatever, he can do whatever he wants to do. But that's not saying that he is going to take over the will of every person. If you think about parents in a family as you have toddlers running around, well, you certainly can get them where you want to get them, but you don't always. So we could imagine, just for the sake of argument, we could imagine God being ultimately powerful and yet designing a world with other creatures who are also volitional creatures. So while, so our um, will might not be an attack on God's will. It could be that while God has is absolutely omnipotent, absolutely omniscient, we would have nothing to say against those. But it might be that he also chooses to let people make choices. Which brings me to answer number three um, to the question, is everything predetermined? 
while the volitional will of God seems evident, and it's absolutely evident. If God wants something to happen, it's going to happen. If God makes a promise, it's going to be kept. There's You can't read the scriptures honestly and say that that's not taught. At the same time, the the volitional will of mankind also seems just as evident in scriptures. And I would say that this is evidenced by the conditional nature of the covenants, that God over and over in the covenantal language is and if you obey me, your life will go well. You'll live long in the land. And if you don't, you'll experience the curse. I call heaven and earth as witness against you that you would choose life. Because if you choose life and you follow my commands, then things are going to go good. And if you choose to disobey and you chase after idols, then things are going to go bad. And every one of these covenants has this. These are the rules. And if you go with them, if you stick close to me, things are going to go well. That seems like God is acknowledging the volitional will of people. I would also think this is evidenced in the language that says we can grieve the Holy Spirit. How could we grieve the Holy Spirit if we're not really making choices? I think this is evidenced in the call to repent, to die to self. Repent means change decisions, to make a, a, a mental decision of my own free choosing to turn from myself and move towards God, to change directions. In many of the scriptures, um, of Jesus teaching uh, are talking about choices. You know, we're in the Sermon on the Mount right now on Sundays and, and Jesus says, Hey, there's a broad road and there's a narrow road. Choose the narrow one. There's a big gate and a narrow gate. Choose the, choose the narrow gate. There's people that build their house on a rock and there's other people who build their house on a sand, build your house on a rock. There's over and over, there's this call to come and follow. And this seems like God, like Jesus, calling us to make a willful decision to get up and follow him. Um, so answer number, what are we on? Answer number four to that question. So the will of God, the, again, unassailable sovereignty of God seems evident in Scripture. God's will is absolutely effective. Also, it seems to be that in his choosing, God made a universe with people who also make choices. And the next answer to that, the next piece of information to that is this. It seems to me that there is at least in part a dynamic relationship between people and God. So again, open theology might go too far where um, an open uh, theology stance might be that God doesn't know the exact future, sees it all laid out, but doesn't know uh, which choices people are going to make. Um, I don't know. That might be a little far. Uh, but the relationship between God and man does seem exactly that, that it is a relationship. I don't have a relationship with somebody I don't have a relationship with a robot if I'm completely controlling them. I don't have a relationship with somebody who's completely controlling me. Rather, a relationship is between two volitional people. And it sure seems like that is the way people and God always did, always have, and always will relate is in a mutual choosing. God chooses us and we choose him. So, Back to what might you mean by um, everything happens for a reason. You know what? We've covered a lot of ground. Why don't I take the rest of this uh, tomorrow on Monday? We'll pick this back up. But let me leave you just with, with those rails to run on, that to think about. Do you agree that the will of God is effective and evident in Scripture? Do you agree that the will of man is evident and um, taught in scripture. Um, and then do you believe that what is happening between the volitional willful God and the volitional willful human? Now, we're not saying that these have equal authority, equal power. Not at all. If God wants something to happen, it will happen. But what kind of a universe has God created? Everything happens for a reason. Let's, let's ditch that language. Instead, why don't we say, this incredibly sovereign, powerful, loving God can redeem everything, including the evil choices made by these volitional, willful humans. All right, we'll pick this up on Monday.